nations of the earth now rejoice. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing His praise. All the people of God sing His praise. Everything that has breath shout for joy. Everything that has breath shout for joy. Cause everything that is beautiful belongs to you. watching our weekly broadcast with the House of Christ. I'm Dr. Geraldine Rush and I just want to encourage you to catch us each Friday at 11 a.m. here on Channel 17 and you'll be so glad that you did. And if you would like to catch us on Facebook Live, we broadcast our sermon every Sunday between 1045 and 11 a.m. So just send a message uh, to become a friend and you can watch us on Facebook Live. God bless you. Continue to grow in Christ. Mm -hmm. our, our scripture for our sermon today is going to be coming from Isaiah 61. Amen? And we're just going to read verses uh, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to, com to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen? Amen. May God bless the readers, the doers, and the hearers of his word on today. Let us pray. Father, we truly thank you. And we give you all the glory, God. We give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. But it is I, O oh Lord God, standing in the need of prayer. So, Father God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, O oh God, and bring forth your word on today, that it may be preached with clarity, boldness, Father God, that we may exalt you, Jesus. So, Father, have your way in this place. Walk these aisles, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Bring those things to my remembrance, O oh God, that you would have me to share with your people at this time. Lord, have your way in me. Have your way in this place. Church, oh God, have your way in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Just from a theme I want to preach. Uh, power given to call leaders. Power given to call leaders. We have preached about the power of his spirit. Isaiah was a spiritual man of God and he was able to advise what? Four kings and other leaders during his time. That's, that's astounding because most prophets don't get to advise but maybe one. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. One king if, if, if they can. Praise God. But, uh, you know, um, but to, for Isaiah to advise four, God really was using him. He saw many things in his life. Of, he saw many things in the life of God's people come to pass. Mm -hmm. He saw bondage in the homeland. He saw them carried away into slavery to a foreign land. He was the he was the return. He saw the return of the people to Jerusalem and he saw the vision of the Messiah's birth. He was a mouthpiece that God used a long time. Amen, somebody. So y'all say a long time, long time. Amen. Long time. In, in the beginning of Isaiah's ministry, he sees the people of God with a very bleak future. Amen, somebody. And in the end, he saw strong hope for God's people. He saw a change happen. Amen. Some of the lessons we see in the book of Isaiah is vision is born out of value and ethics when they align. Amen, somebody. 
The measure of a person is what he or she does with power. Leaders create atmospheres and environments for growth and success. Ability, opportunity, and desires make up the components of a call to lead. God reduces prideful leaders, but provides resources for humble leaders. Amen, somebody. Amen. Great planning that ignores God and the change and the changing culture is doomed to fail. Amen. Come on. Amen. I don't care how good your planning is. If you ignore God, come on, somebody. It ain't it is not gonna come to pass. Insecure leaders inevitably destroy people. Insecure folks, come on. Yeah. Secure leaders develop people. Amen. The higher Leaders climb the fewer there are who can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Come on. And God himself provides the ultimate model of servant leadership. He does. The book of Isaiah starts with Isaiah responding to a divine call. And Isaiah develops a heart of love for the unlovable. You know, to be in this business, you're going to have to love folks that ain't lovable. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You're going to have to love them. What we find is that God had to do a work in Isaiah before he could do a work for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, many times God calls us to ministry, but there are some things God needs to change in us mm -hmm. before we can help somebody else. All of our issues need to be settled. All of our shortcomings need to be dealt with. Come on, somebody. Whatever is not right needs to get right with you yeah. before you can help somebody else because what? Hurt people hurt other folks. Yeah. Amen. And so you can't leave anybody if you're leaving a trail. Come on, somebody. Of hurt folks behind. Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't do a work for the Lord if we're not ready to do the work. What qualifies a person to be a, what qualifies a person to be a leader? Most natural leaders don't aspire to be great leaders. They don't. Mm -hmm. They aspire to be the best person they can be. Mm -hmm. Amen. Personal qualifications lead to leadership qualifications. It does. So if you're really trying to get yourself together, you know, and it works, you can help get other folks together. Mm -hmm. Because now you're working from a template that works. Come on, somebody. When leaders lead their own lives well, others naturally want to follow. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants your recipe. Come on. Mm -hmm. When you can get to the top and there ain't a line of slaughtered folks behind you, folks want to know how you do it. How can you keep still loving people? How can you still help folks? How can you still? Come on. Amen. Because most leaders are at the top by themselves. Because mm -hmm. they have trampled so many folks underfoot. Mm -hmm. Amen. There are four areas in a person's life that enables what? Them to lead well. Character. Character. It enables us to do what is right even when it seems difficult. Mm -hmm. Amen. Perspective. Perspective enables us to understand what must happen to reach a goal. Mm -hmm. Courage. Courage enables us to initiate and take the risk to step out toward the goal, the worthy goal. Mm -hmm. You got to have some courage. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Amen. Favor. Favor from the Lord enables us to attract and empower others to join us in the cause. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When we read the book of Isaiah, and it is one of the biggest books in the Bible, it's so much stuff in the book of Isaiah. Folks, stay away from it. Amen. Because it's a huge book. But there is more teaching in that book than probably any other book in the Bible. Amen. We see all the things unfold in the lives of the people, the kings that Isaiah instructed. Amen. What is the difference between a leader and a follower? I just have a few points I want to share with you. A leader sees the ultimate goal and potential. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the goal and the potential at the beginning. A follower can only see the here and now. Mm -hmm. Amen. A leader, leaders are driven by their vision for tomorrow. Followers are driven by the atmosphere of today. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Leaders stay on track by focusing on what the goal. 
But followers can be diverted by today's losses. Yes, mm -hmm. Come on. Leaders' key word is ultimate. Mm -hmm. Followers' key word is immediate. Mm. Right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. They can't, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't see into the future. Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. They have what? No vision. Come on. As Isaiah saw the sharp shortfalls and pitfalls of the leaders, he advised, he advised we can take quite a few lessons from what we taught, he taught, and what we learned. Remember, our preparation plus God's provisions equals success. Amen. 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 Say that again. Remember, our preparations plus God's provisions equal success. Amen. You got to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. You got to prepare yourself. I don't care what God calls you to do. You got to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. When I was called to preach the word of God, I didn't just run out there to go do it. I know I went to seminary. Come on, somebody. Because I needed to be prepared. The same way with Paul. When God called Paul on the road to Damascus, Paul just didn't run out there. Paul went and got prepared for the call that God had called him to do. What am I saying? Come on, y'all. You know, I hear too many times, but when did the Lord call me? Mm -hmm. Amen. But God calls us, amen, to be prepared. Why did Jesus call the disciples to prepare them mm -hmm. for the work that he had for them? Mm -hmm. Amen. And when he felt that they were ready, he sent them out. Mm -hmm. He sent them out. We preached about the spirit and how it came upon Isaiah and it was different from the spirit that dwells within him. We preach about the anointing and how it empowers us to do God's will. We preach about the good tidings God sent us to bring to the poor and what good tidings meant. We discussed how he had sent Isaiah to heal the broken heart, which is an overwhelmed, you know what broken heart it is? It's overwhelmed by grief or disappointment. That's what a broken heart is. You thought it was going to work out and your heart is broken because it didn't. Mm -hmm. Come on. You're overwhelmed with grief. Your heart is broken because somebody you feel left here too early. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. You know, you, 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 you're just broken hearted. But the word says that God has sent people to heal the broken heart. Mm -hmm. But most folks don't want to be healed. A lot of people don't want their broken heart healed. They want to carry it around and drag it with them so that everybody can see them and pity them. Amen. Let's be careful. Because if the word says that he, he that broken heart can be healed, come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have to stay, you don't have to keep it. Right. Let it go and move on because God got something better. Mm -hmm. Broken heart is a part of life. If you get through this life without your heart being broken, I'm going to wonder if you got one. <laughs> come on, somebody. If you get through this life without your heart being broken, come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wonder if you have one. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And how so many people are suffering from a broken heart. They really are. You, you, you know what you can spot them? Because what are they talking about? They're always talking about what's the left or what they lost. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting here going, but you're still in the land of the living. You're going to live? Mm -hmm. I, I, too many times I tell folks they should have, that when they dug that hole for whoever, they should have dug too. Mm -hmm. Because they done quit living, they put both of them in there. Mm -hmm. You need to keep moving on. If God didn't call you home from labor to reward, you need to keep on doing what God called you to do. To the best of your ability. We discuss how we proclaim freedom to the captives and how freedom has the most liberty anyone has ever seen. People need to be freed. Mm -hmm. Amen. We also preach about how people are in prison and have never set foot in the jail. Mm -hmm. You're in prison in your mind. Anytime you think you can't when you can, come on somebody, you're in prison. Mm -hmm. You're being held back. It's like somebody done locked the door and you're afraid to open it. You're in prison. Mm -hmm. Anytime you won't do anything that you're fearful of, you're in prison. Mm -hmm. And God already told us that he has not given us what a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. So where is that fear coming from? Mm -hmm. Why you can't open the door and move on out? Mm -hmm. How come you can't lunch?
young child. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to young folks because y'all have a fear of doing stuff. You've been prepared. You've been, you've been, you, you've been given an opportunity, but yet, amen. Come on, on this road to find you and on this road to your life, you're going you to take a couple of bad turns. Mm -hmm. Get back on the highway. Amen. Amen. You're going you're gonna to work for a couple of bad companies. Amen. Amen. Once you realize there ain't nothing in it for you, get up and keep on moving. Amen. God gave you that job. He got many more for you. Amen. Amen, somebody. He don't give us anything to stay in what we hate going. If you hate going to work, that is not the job for you. Amen? Amen? If you hate going, that ain't the job for you. It's time to move on to another one. Because you ought to what? enjoy whatever you're spending eight hours or ten hours of every day. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody today. Come on. Mm -hmm. And there are jobs out there that you will enjoy. Yes. And get paid to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Prison is a state of mind and how you can be set free. And today, we want to share. Come on, we want to talk about uh, other verses in this scripture. Amen. Luke 4, 14 and 21. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Come on, he went to church. Come on, y'all. And he stood up for to read. And there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he had opened the book and he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus was sent to the poor. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are what proves to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it to uh, gave it again to the minister and he sat down. Jesus quoted his coming out spirit. His coming out sermon. What he came, he quoted what he was sent to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And then he said that, and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, this scripture fulfilled in your ears. But people didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't, they didn't know it was him that was fulfilling the scripture. Come on. Mm -hmm. They were looking for something to happen, but they weren't looking for it from him. I'm going to tell you something. The least place where you yeah. expect is always the place where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Come on. We would drive up to a house and say, I know they don't live here. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's where they at. Amen. But no, we want to we wanted drive out to Germantown because that's where they ought to be. Mm -hmm. Right? We need to drive out, but we don't want to go to a little old town down in Mississippi. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need Amen. to go down to the river. That's where they at. Come on. No, but we don't want to come down here to South Haven. Mm -hmm. Come on, where the anointing is. Mm -hmm. We want to follow, go all over the place. Come on. And then you get so tired of the journey, now you're too tired to go where you should have gone in the first place. Mm -hmm. Come on. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? This term, which Jesus quoted from Isaiah, is used no other place in the Bible, but the meaning is clear. It is the year in which the full plan and purpose of God is accomplished. Mm. Amen. Amen. This year being not a literal year, but the full cycle, the finished cycle of restoration, God's redemption plan. This acceptable year of the Lord is what Jesus preached all through his ministry in which he himself came to accomplish. So what we have is this. By the time we cycle through the feast and harvest seasons in Israel each year, we have what amounts to a complete picture of redemption plan of God. Thus it can be said that the outworking of this plan of redemption is what? The acceptable year of the Lord. It is his year. 
and it is acceptable to him. Amen. Amen. The acceptable year of the Lord, which is being described by Jesus in Luke, it was to be what spiritually brought to pass through him. This was what Isaiah was prophesizing. Jesus fulfilled or will fulfill all the feast days as well as the spiritual intent of the year Jubilee. He said he came to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. So Jesus was the one who accomplished fully the acceptable year of the Lord as illustrated by the feast and the harvest each year. Amen. He was the one who brought proclamation and brought to pass the real fulfillment of the year of Jubilee. You will notice that the acceptable year of the Lord is the accomplishment of more than just acts and miracles by Jesus. More than that, the acceptable year of the Lord is really a term which embodies the working of the, re of the redemption in us, in all humanity. Every single point Jesus listed among the things he came to do for us, there isn't a single thing on the list which takes away anything from us. He came to give. He didn't come to take. Come on. Amen. He, he, he came to give. Then it talks about what? And the day of vengeance of our God. What was that talking about? A proclamation of war against his enemies. Christ proclaimed the day of vengeance of our God. The vengeance he takes on sin and Satan. It ain't on us, y'all. Come on. He takes vengeance on sin and Satan. Death and hell and all the powers of darkness that were to be destroyed in order to our deliverance. These Christ triumphed over at the cross. Having spoiled and weakened them, shamed them, and made a show of them openly, therein taking vengeance on them for all the injury injured they had done both to man and to God. See, a lot of times statements are said, but we don't really ever get a clear understanding of what is being talked about. So the day of vengeance, come on, is when Jesus went to the cross. See, and people don't even, we think that that was a day of suffering, but it was a day that God, come on, y'all, he made what was wrong right. Mm. Amen. Too many times we, we, we get a, a misunderstanding, but that's when Jesus declared war on Satan and sin. I done made a way for my people to escape from this mess. They ain't got to be tore down, poor hearted, distrodden. Uh -uh. I done took care of all of that. But yet we still let Satan, come on, have the victory in our lives because we just don't know what we have in Jesus. This is why it's so important that you don't listen to folks, but you get, get your Jesus every week. I don't care if it's just a couple of scriptures. Come on, somebody. I don't care if it's just a prayer. Get your Jesus every week so he can fortify you to deal with the stuff that you got to deal with on a daily basis. Amen. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Then the scripture tells us in Mark 16 that he believed that, that, that he that believes shall be saved. And see, all the only thing Jesus asked for us, here we go again, if you believe in me, you'll be saved. Amen. All this stuff that the enemy trying to take from you and do to you, uh-uh, it's of no avail. But if your focus is on him, then you know it has no power. But when our focus is not on Christ, the devil is beating you like a drum. He's beating you like a drum. Yeah. Then the scripture talks about here in verse 3 to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. In Psalms 87 verses 2 and 3, the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said to you, city of God. You know who Zion is? It's Jerusalem. Amen. According to this, Zion is synonymous with the city of God, which was David's city. Come on, y'all. It is a place that God loves. Zion is Jerusalem. Mount Zion is the high hill on which David built the citadel. 
It is on the south side of the city. The word Zion is also used in a theological or spiritual sense in Scripture. In the Old Testament, Zion refers figuratively to Israel as the people of God. Isaiah 60 uh, and 14. In the New Testament, Zion refers to God's spiritual kingdom. Come on, y'all. We have not come to Mount Zion, uh, says the apostle, but to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. What it means in one sense in the Old Testament, it means something else to us now. Now Zion is what? Our heavenly kingdom. Amen. A blessing out of Zion are spiritual blessings. The mourners in Zion are holy mourners, such as carrying their sorrows to the throne room of grace. Come on, somebody. For in Zion was the mercy seat. It was. Amen. And poured them out as Hannah did before the Lord. Come on, when they would go to worship. Remember when Hannah was crying out and wanted to have a child? Amen. And the, and the priest thought she was coming in there drunk. Amen. And then when he finally talked to her and he did, he blessed her and she ended up coming, becoming pregnant. He said, Let it be as you have said. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. To such these things, Christ has appointed his gospel and will give. And will give by his spirit those consolations which will not only support them under their sorrows, but turn them into songs of praise. He will give us what we need. Then he talks about beauty for ashes. Whereas they lay in ashes, as was usual in times of great mourning. Remember they'd lay out in the sit in the street and throw ashes on their head when they would be mourning about something. Remember mm -hmm. in the book of Esther? Her uncle, when he heard that they had put out this proclamation to kill all the Jews, he just sat down in the street, put sackcloth to a clothes, and was out there mourning and hollering. And then Esther <laughs> sent one of her servants, what's wrong with Mordecai? Go out there and see what's wrong with him. And then he finally tells her what's going on, and she didn't know. Right. And then he tells her, look, you don't have to go see the king. Right. Amen. But that was what? A form of mourning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And now, you know what? Our mourning is just a broken heart. A contrite spirit. Yes. And when we take it to God, He is faithful and just. Yes. Amen. Yes. To forgive, to uplift. And you know, a lot of times we don't even think about it, but when we give our problems to God, before we get up off our knees, He done already figured out a way and we feel better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of the earth now rejoice. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing his praise. All the people of God sing his praise. Everything that hath breath shall for joy.